Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Anna Champong and I'm here to bring you stories from the motherland. Okay guys, so I'm here with my good friend Della, natural Ghana girl. I'm sure you all know her, but if you don't, <laughs> I'll link all her channels. Channels, yeah? Channels, channels that's and right. my channel down below. Yeah. Before we start the video, make sure you subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. It's always necessary. That's right. But let's get into the video. <laughs> So, Della, thank yes. you for having me. That's okay. Anytime, you know. In, under a very lovely tree in I the know. shade. I love it. Yes. I love to be back. <laughs> How have you been? I've been good. I've been good. Ghana's always good to me, you know. Um, I just love it because the sun just makes me feel good, makes me feel energized. So, mm. I can't complain about can't anything. Complain. Yeah. You're sure, <laughs> I have right. nothing to complain about. So the series I'm doing is Stories from the Motherland, where mm -hmm. we talk about people and basically what their story is. Okay. So can you explain to us where was Della born and raised? Okay. Okay, so basically both my parents are Ghanaian, um, but I was born and raised in the UK. Mm -hmm. So I spent like my whole life in the UK. The only thing I knew about Ghana was coming here every other year for, you know, like summer break holiday from school and stuff like that. Yeah. That was all I knew. And then um, like, I think it was 2007, we came as like a family holiday, like my husband's family, my family, all of us just decided to come as one. And we came for like, I think two week, a two week holiday. And that was- That's that very was, short, two weeks. Yeah, I know, wow. I know. Now I'm like, when people tell me they're coming to Ghana for two weeks, I'm like, what's the point of coming? <laughs> like, cause you <laughs> need time. Short, yeah, yeah, it's very short. But it, in, that trip impacted us so much mm. that we were like, I think six months after that, I was back in Ghana again because I just oh, loved wow. it so much. Because I saw Ghana from a new perspective, okay. not through my parents' eyes. You know, you have to go to mm. your parents' place and all their friends and all that. But this time we came and we enjoyed ourselves. So it was different. And yeah. that just imprinted on me. And so from there, I was just like, Ghana was my everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Because you have a husband and four children, right? Mm -hmm. So when you came at first in the trip you're talking about, yeah. how many were you? Three or two kids? I didn't have any children. Oh, you didn't have any children no. then? Oh, I was okay. Completely so just you and your husband. Yeah. So you enjoyed the nightlife, you saw the we scenery. Enjoyed everything, ah, everything, everything. Love it, love yeah, it. Yeah, it was really good. And your husband's also Ghanaian, right? Yeah. Yep. So did he catch that same same vibe as you that he wanted to move? He or? caught it more than me. Oh, wow. More than me because as soon as we left, I think he even cried at the airport. No, he didn't. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't cry at the airport. But like he just loved it because he was born here and left when he was about six. Okay. And he had never been back. Mm. So that trip for him was like his first proper experience of Ghana. Oh, and wow. so ever since then, he kept saying, I just want to go back. I just want to live in Ghana. I just want to go. Back. And yeah. I wasn't ready. Okay. Although I loved Ghana, I wasn't ready to move. I was like, I haven't had my children. I'm not going there to give birth and mm. all kinds of stuff. So I was like, no. But he kept on pushing me, pushing me. And I was like, no, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. And then we finally decided that, you know, we'd had enough of the UK because over there, you know, how it's just work, 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 work. And we just felt like there was more to life. Okay. And so... After we had baby number three, mm -hmm. we just decided that, you know what, let's go to Ghana, let's try it for a year and see how it kind of goes. Mm -hmm. And so that was how we ended up here. But my husband was the one who really pushed. He wanted to, like, if 2007, he could have stayed, he would have. Oh, nice. That's <laughs> he so He loved nice. it. He absolutely loved it. Okay. Yeah. So when you came here for a year as a family of three, mm. what were the things that you found out that made you stay? I think just seeing how my children just... It was as if they had always lived in Ghana. Mm. They were so free, especially my daughter. She would just wake up in the morning really early. I didn't have to force her to come out of bed. She would just get up before me. She would be outside. She'd be playing in the, the, the sand. And mm. like, she was never bored. Mm. And I just like, even like, it was like so scorching hot and she'd still be outside playing, sweating and playing and she'll keep going. And when I saw the happiness that she had, mm. for me, that just tipped me over the edge. I was like, this oh, is wow. it. She, I mean, all of the, all my children, they were just so happy and so free. Yeah. Like we didn't have any restrictions and there was no schedule to our lives anymore. That was mm. gone. So there was just like a freedom that we'd never experienced before. And it was like, we just couldn't let go of that. Yeah. It was yeah. so nice. Oh, I can imagine. Mm. So from that trip, did you stay or did you go back? No, we stayed. In oh, fact, wow. to be honest with you, we actually planned that we were coming for good. But to make it easier on everyone that we were going to leave behind, we said we're coming for a year. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> because people, we had so many reviews from people. Oh, you can't make it. Ghana will do this. Ghana's not that. Da, 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 da. People said so many negative things. And so to just cut the conversation and to not have to hear it, we just said, oh, we're just going for a year, then we'll back, be back. Mm -hmm. So that was easier for people to digest rather than us saying, oh, we're coming to live here forever. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, 
when you're going to do something, the last thing you need is negativity in your true, ears. True. And so we just didn't want to hear it. So that was just an easier way for us to do it. And so we knew we were going to stay. And so being here for that year just confirmed it. Mm. So we were, we were just happy to stay. And we've oh, been wow. here ever since. Wow. And that was when? That was, so we moved here in 2014. Oh, wow. Yeah, April wow. 2014. Wow. So it's been a while. <laughs> and what did you leave behind in UK? Like besides your friends and family, did you have a house or how mm -hmm. did you... We did. We had a couple of that. houses. We had okay. a couple of houses there before we left. So we left all of that behind. We rented out our houses and moved here. That was like our initial source of income. But we found that was that was a, like a difficult road to go down because sometimes you'd have tenants, sometimes things went wrong. And so we found that wasn't really a good income stream if, if you wanted to stay here. I think if you have lots of houses in the UK and they can balance each other out, then maybe that can be a good source of income. But if you only have one or two, it's probably not the best reliable source of income if you want to move here. So we had some ups and downs with that. Mm. But I think that was the main thing that we left there. Again, like you said, friends and family as well. And that mm. was it. But apart from that, we didn't really miss anything mm. much. We did. <laughs> do, the chick, do the kids miss something? Not really. Probably access to buying things like online. Mm. They miss that because I think my eldest two saw a bit more they had a bit more understanding my youngest at the time he was only one mm -hmm. so he didn't really know but like my other children like they miss toys or us and things like that you know <laughs> they remembered all that they remembered the treats going to the supermarket and being able to easily pick things up to buy and stuff yeah. like that so they miss those little things but apart from that they were just so happy here that mm. there was n it felt like there was almost no transition for them mm. they just straight off okay yeah okay. it was easy for them mm. <laughs> so besides managing two youtube channels what else do you do Okay, so I also run a blog as well. So I have um, a hair blog, so I talk about natural hair and I maintain that as well. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I'm a mother, a wife, and mm -hmm. all the rest. We're building a house mm -hmm. as well here, so. And homeschooling. Yeah, and yeah. homeschooling. So it's all pretty intense. Um, yeah. There's a lot, a lot happening, but you know, you do what you can do. If you can't, you can't. Mm, I try not to put pressure on myself too much to say, I've got to do everything in a day because I feel like that's where so much stress comes from. And sometimes mm -hmm. I try and just, do what I can and I if I can't do something I, I forgive myself hmm. just make it easier because it's a lot hmm. it's a lot and I don't have any help so yeah oh wow that's yeah. really good and so uh, if I understand it correctly your husband is building the house yes where did he get the knowledge to just build the house <laughs> so he's been in construction for many years he's been I think it's up to about 20 years now actually okay. so he started from the very ground the bottom ground and worked his way up so he started out as a laborer in the UK he worked for a company and he worked his way all the way up to like projects manager mm -hmm. so he looked like really took a keen interest in construction so coming here it was a natural transition for him to do the same thing here so and that's what he's so passionate about I mean you know for anybody that's ever met him all he talks about is construction mm -hmm. and you know how things should be done he's got this thing where he hates lines that are not straight and yeah. you know how sometimes you know Ghana's house sometimes they're not the built the best you know like if you've got an eye for detail, there's certain things that would irritate you. And yeah. so for him, that's what he's passionate about. And mm. so it was just natural for him to continue doing what he was doing over there here. So mm -hmm. that's what he loves. You mm. Know? Mm. Okay. Yeah. So you're homeschooling your children, mm. four of them in yeah. very different age groups. Yeah. <laughs> How does that go? Uh, it's tough. It's really, really tough sometimes. So... Because what happened was we were actually homeschooling in the UK for a little bit before we left. They went to school okay. for a time, but we homeschooled there for a little bit just before we left and came here. And it was just easy to kind of continue to homeschool here because when we first came to Ghana, what you have to understand is that Ghana is very different to what it is today. It has changed so much in mm. like the seven or eight years that we've been here. Finding a school that we were happy with and that <laughs> didn't cost the earth was yeah. really, really, really hard. There were not a lot of people that you could speak to and say oh this is send your child here or there you know it was very difficult and so we just decided to continue with homeschool just to make it easier mm -hmm. and it can be hard I'll tell you that it can be hard because you find that all your children learn differently and when you have children that are learning of different ages sometimes it, it can get a bit overwhelming for me who's the teacher mm -hmm. um, so sometimes what I do I find easiest is I, sometimes one day I'll concentrate on one child and then another on another child but I try not to follow the school curriculum too much because I feel like it's quite a tight space. And if you don't fit into a particular mold, then you're labeled in a certain way. So that's the thing that I love about homeschooling. I kind of like will flow more with what the children like, what their interests are, rather than saying, okay, you have to sit down and do maths. You have to sit down and you have to learn this. You're not at your, your level yet or you're, you know, I just like to kind of like 
take things a bit easier and go slow mm -hmm. um, with the children. And I think that's really helpful for them to kind of learn that way. It, I find it easy learning for them rather than being so strict. But I mean, I've sent my children to school here as well okay. for a time. They went to school for about a year. That was interesting mm. because the school was so far away from where we were. It was quite difficult. You know, traffic in traffic Ghana is crazy. It's like you spend half the day in traffic. By the time you dropped them at school and got home, mm -hmm. it was like it's time to go back and pick them up. So yeah. I just felt like that's not life. And I couldn't afford any of the schools that, you know, where we live. It's area, just yeah. so expensive. Yeah. So it was just easy to go back to homeschooling again. Mm. But I feel like my daughter really did actually enjoy being in school. Okay. She did. But she at that point, she was fed up. That's when COVID hit, actually. Mm. And so we pulled them out of school and they never went back. But my daughter's now expressing that she wants to go back to school. Okay. So I will, I will probably put her into school at some stage. Mm -hmm. But the others, the boys are not interested they at all. They don't want all. to. They don't, they're not interested, no. What was their experience of going to school in Ghana for a year? And what type of school was it? Okay, so it was an international school. They were doing British curriculum. Um, they enjoyed it for a time. I think in terms of like socializing with other children, they did enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But I think they found the structure quite rigid. And so like pushing a child to do something that they're not interested in, it kind of deflates them at the same mm. time. Like you have to know your child. You know, some children can take things, some children can't take things. So like they would focus on my son particularly and say, oh, you need to do this, you need to do this. But he's not interested in that. Like if you give him a book to read, he doesn't want to read war and peace or something boring like that he wants to read like marvel comics yeah. that's what and the school doesn't set up to let the children that, yeah. yeah learn what they're passionate about or do mm -hmm. what they're passionate about it says read this book and mm -hmm. learn from this book. but he's not interested so he found that really hard and mm -hmm. that was kind of affecting him negatively so it just didn't make sense for him to continue in something that he's not happy with because mm -hmm. it would have just messed up his whole experience and i, I didn't want that so mm. we just decided to that was that leave it like yeah that. Okay. yeah okay. So if you could take one thing from the UK or is there something that you miss about UK life? Oh my gosh, online shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it difficult to get online shopping here? Because you can't find what you want. I mean, it's got better, but you can't find what you want. Like if I say, okay, so like at the moment I'm looking for a desk for my office. Mm -hmm. Like I can't just say, okay, let me do this random search and see where I can get a desk from. <laughs> you have to go into Instagram, find an account, all search all the different accounts. Mm -hmm. Do you have it? Um, you see a picture and then you say, oh, this desk, how much is it? Oh, DM me for the price. It's like nothing is straightforward. Everything mm -hmm. is like work. It's mm -hmm. like, whereas I can go online in the UK, I can say, okay, I want a bag of crisps and I can just search for it. And I, I have it delivered to me in three days yeah. or two days or the next day, whatever. Yeah. But here, everything is a process and I feel like it takes up so much energy f searching for things. So mm -hmm. if one thing I could bring here, I would just bring some type of proper online service where mm -hmm. things are actually in stock, not out of stock, <laughs> out of stock, out of stock, sorry, out of stock. You know, yeah. <laughs> it can yeah. be frustrating. I feel you, on that. you know, that's yeah. the only thing that I really, really do miss, like having ease the ease of access to buy certain things. Yeah. Because, you yeah. know, we're doing our home at the moment. We're trying to furnish the inside and mm. it's difficult because we can't get what we want. No credit system here as well. So anytime you want to buy something, you have to kind of have all the money up front before you can think about buying it. And mm -hmm. it makes it hard. Yeah. That's another thing. Furnishing a house is very expensive. It's very, Especially very Especially if expensive. you have a good taste. It yeah. is, it is. Yeah. But I always say that, you know, people in Ghana are more rich than those that are abroad because mm -hmm what you see that a Ghana person has, they own it. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you go to the West, the things that you see that people have, they don't own it. It's mm -hmm. all on credit. Mm -hmm. They could lose it all tomorrow. Yeah, Do you see? So like here, it's, it's different. So that's why I always feel like there's a balance between the two places, the West and here, because over there has advantages, over here has advantages. Over mm -hmm. there has disadvantages, over here has disadvantages. So it's, you know, it's what you can handle really. Mm -hmm. But online shopping, man. Someone bring some proper online shopping, please. <laughs> I can imagine. So mm -hmm. I take from your story, you've been here for almost eight years. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gone back to UK in that time? We've only been once, you know. Oh, wow. Only once, yeah. Why is that? Um, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I think maybe because there's so many of us, it's quite expensive for us all to, to go. Yes, it's I just too imagine. much. and. I can't pick one of my children and say, I'll take yeah, you because no, it's like, so, yeah. yeah, do you see? Yeah. So it's so difficult. And right now with all the travel restrictions and stuff, it's even more expensive to fly. So, yeah. and we haven't had that much of a reason to fly, apart from seeing certain people, mm. we haven't had that much of a reason to fly. Like a lot of the stuff that we want, we just ship, mm -hmm. you know, people come here on holiday as well. So 
you don't miss too much. The mm. last time that we were there on holiday, I felt like other people were so busy anyway, we didn't really get to enjoy their company because they are going to work. Mm -hmm. They're doing, you know, it's not like when someone comes here, mm -hmm. you can clear your schedule and, and you can spend you with them. time yes, with yeah. them. And, but over there, it's completely different. If you go there, you're on your own, you yeah. know, they're going to work. So what do you do Monday to Friday? Mm -hmm. True. You're on your own. Mm. So. I don't, I didn't, I don't know. They, I just feel like there's not that much for me to go. If I was mm. to go, I'd want to go maybe like three days and come back. Oh, that's wow, it. That's sure. For shopping, right? <laughs> yeah, for shopping and come back. I don't really okay. have anything that I'm really missing that much that mm. I need to be there for a long period of time. Okay. Yeah. What would you give people from Ghana into the UK? It doesn't have to be a thing. It can also be like, is there oh, anything? That's you a hard would... question. What would I want to what give What would you them? like to take from Ghana and give in the UK? I would like people to experience what actual freedom is. Because mm. I feel like over there you've never, you haven't experienced, you, might, you may think that you're free, but you're actually not. Mm. Because you're stuck in a system that is telling you that you have to go to work, you have to live your life a particular way. When you don't, there are hundreds of ways that you can live. Like one thing I love about Ghana is that it forces you to be entrepreneurial. You can have your hands in so many different things. Mm -hmm. Whereas over there, you're very much told to go through the school system, get a job, get a mortgage, you know, and then you get your pension. And I feel like that's not the only road that you can take. There are so many other ways to make money over there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's not explored enough mm -hmm. or I, I don't know, I don't know the reason why, but over here, you're much more pushed to do, find something to do. And so you, you know, your creative genius starts to come out. And I feel like a lot of people don't have that over there. So sometimes when I see people over there, I'm like, do you know what you could be doing? You are so mm -hmm. you're so good at this, you're so good at that, but you're so focused on your job because you're scared that if your job doesn't give you your income, you're going to lose everything. Yeah. That they they're losing their talents because they're not focusing on anything else. Whereas mm -hmm. so many businesses could be born if. But anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get that. You, I get that. Know. It's really true. Yeah. So in five years, where do you see yourself, your business, and your family? Oh, Would gosh. you still be in Ghana? Oh, absolutely. Where else am I going to go? But I think one thing we would love to do more is explore more of the African countries. I feel like there's so much there that we haven't seen. Mm -hmm. And so it would be nice to actually go out there and see what's out there because, you know, while we were in the UK, you know, we go to Spain, you go to France, you go to all these other places, but actually we've never really experienced Africa. And I mean, it was a shock for me to see that there are cold places in Africa. I'm like, how? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just like so weird to me, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'd like to go to different places and experience different things and expose my children to different things as well. I don't want them to just have like a small view of the world. I want them to see what else is out there. Cause man, as I say, the world really is your oyster. You can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be stuck in one country. It doesn't have to be Ghana. You don't have to move to Ghana just cause you're Ghanaian. You can go to any of the African countries, take one, pick your fancy and you know, live your life. Mm. That's how I see it anyway. Mm. Yeah. So in five years, do you think your, of course, your house is going to be finished? Is it like the, the video that, <laughs> that we saw? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be like that? Oh yeah, we oh, definitely, nice. we definitely want it to be like that. So we want, we want the house to be able to incorporate our friends and family. Okay. So when we want to have like social events and stuff like that, we want to have the flexibility to be able to do it because we actually really like entertaining. Mm. And that's one of the things that has been really hard for us because building, we've been yeah. in the process of building. You can't really have people over because it's a building site and there's nowhere to sit and all of that. Yeah. So we've kind of found that very difficult. Mm. So it'd be nice to have like a really nice big open space where we can entertain, we can have people come and stay over. That's the terrace, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, have nice. people come and stay over because we have extra beds rooms mm. you know it's just we just want to be we just want to open up to people and mm. so people can also if they want to come and experience Ghana they have somewhere to stay mm. and come and experience because we did it the hard way and I know mm. the way that we did it is not always it's not for everybody because mm. not everybody can rough it you know but so we want to give some people a comfortable landing so you're coming okay so maybe we have somewhere that you can stay for six months until you settle yourself mm. or whatever so come and stay experience what you need to experience and then make your move mm. do you see so we just really want to be able to help people in that sense so oh, that's, really that's what we really want to do we just want to make it open to other people mm. to come yeah so we really want to within that five years as you're saying we just mm -hmm. want to be able to do that really? be able to welcome okay. more people here oh beautiful mm. would you still be homeschooling oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, i hope not to be mm. Um, because it's really difficult. Um, my daughter definitely, I know within that five years, definitely she'll be in school. In fact, probably by next 
next term or mm. next next academic year she'll probably be in school mm. but I would like to transition my other children into school as well but I'm not going to push them to do something that they really don't want to do yeah. maybe we have to look at other options perhaps maybe bring in a tutor in so that I can free up some of my time mm -hmm. or we can um, at one point we were actually having the children learn online from the UK so okay. they had a tutor in the UK who was teaching them perhaps we'll go back to something like that mm -hmm. I'm not sure but there are loads of options there's not one way and so you know, there's never a reason to be stuck in something. There's always other options if you look closely enough. So perhaps that's an avenue that we'll, we'll explore. So we'll okay. See. And where do we see the channel? What can we expect from you? Oh, gosh. Okay, so um, my home channel is definitely, before it was very much building, like the construction of the house. But now I want to show a bit more of the internals, a bit more interior design, a bit more home living, a bit more kind of getting to know me a bit more. So my channel, I think, is going for a little bit of a rebrand at the moment where I'm showing more of the lifestyle in Ghana within the house rather than just the hardcore bricks and cement, you know, type thing. So mm -hmm. we'll see, we'll see. It. Okay. Yeah, and the other channel's more vlogging, so it's me. If you want to know about all the crazy stuff that I can get up to, that's that channel. That's what we yeah. <laughs> oh, Thank you so much for having me that's today. That's all right, thank you for coming. Make sure you subscribe to both of our channels, and yeah. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>